everybody, uh, Dr. Rick dropping in. Hope everybody is off to a great start this week. Look, I'm going to get right into this. I got a lot to cover in a very short period of time, but I felt like it needed to be covered. Um, Y'all guys know how I feel about celebrity gossip. But at the same time, when underneath that talk and those rumors are things that ultimately impact the masses and specifically my people, uh, especially along the lines of things that I've literally been talking about, writing about, lecturing about for years, I think it's important to put your finger on it because so many of us tend to hear things and easily dismiss it because it sounds outlandish, because it sounds ridiculous, or because somebody has labeled uh, the person or the messenger as being a conspiracy theorist. And so uh, I remember a few years ago, all the way up until recently, uh, before he did the Club Shay Shay interview, Cat Williams was labeled as a, a drug addict, as psychotic, and everything else because he was talking about the specific thing happening in entertainment, happening in Hollywood, and he was pointing out specific people. One of the people that he specifically named was Diddy. And everybody's going, come on, man, he's just taking shots. And, you know, one of the problems that we have as a people is we tend to judge who's who's on the right side of things and who's on the wrong side of things by who has the most money. What I have learned, and it's not an exact science, and it's it, there are exceptions, but what I have learned is generally the one with the most money is probably the one on the wrong side because they have the power. Now, people can be upset, people can have something don't go their way, and people can literally make claims that aren't true. It happens. Uh, but what you will find is a lot of times that power plays hardball. But anyway, uh, last summer, I want to say last summer sometime, but months ago, Cassie, uh, Diddy's ex, filed a lawsuit against him for $30 million dollars alleging a lot of stuff uh, from the point that he raped her, that he forced her to have sex with other guys that he brought in and all kind of weird, crazy, freaky, you know, bad stuff. And it, it was all alleged in the documents and, you know, we will never know what had merit, merit but when you think about somebody that spent literally nearly 20 years with someone that's gone through all the things that she went through with him, uh, there has to be something going on for her to be around that long and for her to do what she's doing at this particular point. Now, you could say, OK, he decided to move on or whatever, and she bit her or whatever. You know, hey, things have happened. Uh, I'm not here to even talk about the merit of that lawsuit, but what I can say is rather than be deposed uh, in a deposition, rather than, be, than being deposed in a deposition and having to actually have that uh, lawsuit proceed, he settled uh, for what is officially deemed an undisclosed amount. Uh, sources have it as high as 100 mil. So he literally settled for more than what he was being sued for. So obviously something was going on. But again, it would call for only speculation. You don't have any proofs uh, outside of what you saw in the documentation. And because it was never, ever uh, brought to light and critiqued under the light of, you know, uh, scrutiny to stand up its allegations. But he settled. That's not why I'm here. Why I'm here is because Rodney Jones, a person who is uh, titled, uh, quote unquote, a producer that worked with Diddy for over 13 months and during that time lived in the same space with Diddy, uh, dropped a lawsuit. And this one is a whoop. And again, I'm not here for all the, the uh, juicy topics and the tea. But I can tell you that there are a lot of allegations from big, uh, from 
uh, Diddy being involved in Biggie's murder, Pox murder, blowing up Kid Cudi's car uh, behind Cassie, um, having literally killing somebody in the studio, and having cops in LA li uh, literally uh, cover it up for him, um, and the media cover it up for him, and so much, and it's so much that's brought after this. When you actually go and you read the actual document, which is uh, available, it's a lawsuit, so it's available. So when you read it, it plays out and lays out exactly how Cat Williams was saying it was going on. Uh, even on a recent interview with uh, Joe Rogan, which I, you know, I. I didn't necessarily think he should have did, but Joe Rogan is, has returned, had some kind of issue going on with Spotify, so he's now back doing his primary stuff on YouTube. His uh, first interview back was Cat Williams, and Cat Williams again talked about uh, the primary purpose of Hollywood isn't to entertain. Yes, you get entertained, but Hollywood is a media conglomerate collectively responsible for propaganda and of course because of how we are programmed to think the automatic assumption is this dude's crazy but he said this before and all the things he said about Diddy now what uh, it, it ultimately comes out of this though when you read a, when you read into it is there's this ring of blackmailing going on that there are cameras and everything and one of the accusations about Diddy was that he would have film all the crazy stuff that people would be doing there and then he would use it to blackmail them he would uh keep it whether it was drugs whether it was homosexuality whether it was you know orgies or whatever he would uh he would literally film it and do it now this has been a going an ongoing thing from what can be said and understood from what was undercovered about Jeffrey Epstein and what went on on Epstein Island, uh, you can see that there were politicians and everybody involved. There were some powerful names on that. And the reason that Epstein was always able to get away with it for so long was because the people in power were protecting him. Now, one of the people's names that comes out in this new lawsuit. Man, this stuff is crazy. And But what it does is if you take time to undress it, if you take time to do a little extra research, you understand that there's the uncapping of a rabbit hole that runs extremely deep and it expands and branches out in ways that's unimaginable. But uh, one of the things that was said about Jeff Epstein is that he had uh, a lot of stuff on a lot of people and so that ultimately ended up being um, how he was able to maintain uh, coverage and get away with whatever he wanted to get away with. So then it comes out that this whole thing that Diddy has an alliance with a guy by the name of Sir Lucian Grange, whose name was at one point Michael G., who is the son of Cecil G, who was the fashion designer from the UK, who dressed all of their guys back in the 60s from the Beatles on down to some others. Um, and Cecil G's real name was Sasha Goldstein. Make the connection. Okay, so Sir Lucian, the one who has this connection with Diddy, look him up is the head of Universal Studios. Yeah, that guy. And so one of the most powerful people in Hollywood. And he has reportedly shown up at Diddy's house uh, on numerous occasions. This guy, Rodney Jones, uh, has alleged, and I keep using the word alleged because number one, for legal reasons, I have to. Number two, it's, it's just that until it's proven. You just start to say, okay, at what point do we stop seeing coincidence in stories being reported in the last over 20 year periods? Um, but anyway, so what happens is this guy shows up and for whatever reason, him and Diddy are locked in the bedroom for hours at a time. Uh, now what a man does in his bedroom isn't my business, 
But what I'm here for is the fact that there's this bigger thing that I've been telling you about. Go to the site and look up how many times I wrote on propaganda. Look through my videos and find how many times I've spoken on propaganda. How many times I've talked about the power of the media to control not only how you think, but your movements, your behaviors, your responses, how to, uh, to trigger you. Literally, the entire thing is set on the media. Who we believe, who we don't believe, everything is set on the media. And so, the crust of what I, I'm looking at and I see and I come to is Kat is saying that Hollywood was always about control. The media, but you got to understand, propaganda isn't new. Propaganda has existed throughout time. Propaganda has been viewed in, in the scope of government and power as a necessary uh, a necessary requirement. It's always been there. It is how you keep the masses uh, under control. You got to think. You've got millions of people, all with minds who want things a certain way and you have to keep them all encapsulated in a certain ram or rain or train of thought and you have to keep them believing in something consistently while the vast majority of them never benefit from it and you think about that the vast majority of people are simply playing the game. They're in the rat race. They're playing to keep up and all of this is to keep the people who are in power in power to make the rich richer and it is literally this mass pr pr machine that is consistently plugging along and doing that. So, the, the, the thing is this. I've been trying to get you guys to see this for a minute. It's not just entertainment. It's not just music. It's, just, it's not just articles. It's not just movies. Everything is designed for a reason. There's a reason why there's a, a increase in interracial relationships and commercials. There's a reason for all of the things you look at. There's a reason why music has been done down and violence and drugs has become the prevalent uh, prevalent theme in certain music genres that are consumed by specific people. And what we have to understand is we need to be in a place to create our own propaganda. We need to be in a place to create our own content. We need to be in a place to create messaging that is pro-social and productive for what we're trying to accomplish as a people and understand that while it's funny, while it's uh, passionate, while it's inciting and sometimes inspirational, we got to be very careful what we consume coming out of these places that uh, serve as the sources and origins of our entertainment. So when that being said, I am really and truly challenging everybody here to be aware of what uh, you consume uh, be aware of it, but definitely uh, for those of you who are readers and researchers, not for the sake of tea and talking about you know what's going on, but I mean that's a lot of stuff, and you got to wonder, okay, how? Because the first thing that we do is, if they were doing all that, they'd have got caught by now, right? See, we're used to playing by a different set of rules. We are literally playing by a different set of rules. You know, they're not playing by the same rules we're playing by. They're not playing by the rules where you do something and somebody sees it, they, you get caught, you, you go to jail. They're playing by the power thing, the power uh, code. They're playing by, you know, and obviously from what I understand, Diddy's on both sides of this thing. He's being blackmailed. Uh, by certain powerful people, but he's also got stuff on some very powerful people, which means that he's covered. That's why certain things seem to just go away. Um, and, um, and imagine, in the grand scope of things, his billion dollars is small in the way the money is really spread out and the way things are moved and the way things go. So with that being said, you got to look at and say, man, how deep does the rabbit hole go? How much power is being wheeled? How, how much 
um, control is willed out of Hollywood. And if, if it, it's anything close to what I think, just understanding what I've learned about propaganda uh, and programming and subliminal messaging and all in, in my work over the years, we really truly need to sit back and rethink this thing. So on that note, I am going to on that note, I am going to get ready to get out of here. I want to thank you for your time, but I just had to address this because I remember everybody was calling Cat crazy. Uh, everybody was saying he just jealous of Diddy. Everybody, he said, now all this stuff is starting to unfold and we're starting to see power players from Oprah to Tyler to everybody start to dig in and a lot of stuff come out. And what I want us to do is get past the T. Get past all the gossip BS and start looking at the elements and the components, the dynamic, uh, the dynamics and the schisms at play that govern all, all of the things that we are experiencing. And all the way through politics, academics, banking, all of this stuff is impacted. And yet we know very little about it because we don't spend the time to learn it. How many times have you heard me say that we lose because we don't know how, we don't understand or know how things work? It's time to gain an understanding of how things work so that we can start implementing our own movements, our own strategies, and our own agendas. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. But I had to drop that. I couldn't just leave it on that note, so I'm out of here. Take care.